Lord, you being good to me, you made a way I could not see. Your love came in and lifted me, and now I won't complain. So I worked for some years as a doctor um, in the hospital, and then I did my GP training. So I just finally finished that fully just before the twins were born. But always, family's been a big priority for me. I knew that when I had kids, I want to spend most of the time at home when they were little. When we found out Ma was pregnant, we went in for a scan. The person doing the scan said that, oh, it looks like you've got twins. And then when they came along, it was really, uh, yeah, really intense, really hard out. To go from no kids to twins straight off the bat, I think was pretty, yeah, pretty intense. First 18 months were really hard. Mm -hmm. But probably about 18 months and it started to feel like I was getting the benefits of twins. They started to play together more at that stage. You could see that uh, Aotea was the, the boss. She even looked like the boss. Mm. And a lot of people commented that she looked like the boss and Nehana was just all over the place, you know. He, he was just playful, active and didn't mind his sister at all. <laughs> even though they're only little, I mean, they were great friends. Great to have a play partner. Although, yeah, at the start they weren't you know, it was just lots of work, but then it started to be like the interacting with each other, talking to each other, always with each other, you know. Woohoo! Yay! Good one, Baba! When they were about 12 months old, I thought that I should go back to work because I thought well, it would be a good thing to do. I could still keep up with my medical career and keep up with my registration, and it would be, um, you know, it would be good for the kids to go along to daycare as well. I was up in the office, just a normal day. Um, towards the afternoon, I got a phone call from the daycare. Uh, someone said that Nehana has choked at daycare and uh, they're doing CPR. And I just asked, uh, is he breathing? And they said they're doing CPR. And I repeated it, is he breathing though? I said, well, the ambulance is here and they're doing CPR. And um, so I just instantly dropped all my work, jumped in the, uh, my ute, just drove home as fast as I could. I started to freak out a little. I remember hearing God say quite sternly, no, as if to say, don't fret about it. So I just finished work and then I pulled into my house and then I got a phone call from a teacher at the daycare saying that Nehana had choked. And then I just raced up to the daycare and went into the foyer and they wouldn't let me in to where he was. So probably after like 20 minutes of waiting out in the foyer, the teacher went, I asked her to go and see what was happening and she came back and said they were giving him adrenaline and being a doctor I knew that was actually was a bad thing. It meant that his heart still wasn't going. And then finally they came out though and they said that they'd got his heart going again. I mean, I, had ex I expected that he was going to die actually in that time, that they'd come out and say that he'd died. Then they left there and went to hospital, didn't they? And on the way to hospital, he started to come too. Uh, but because of, they thought it could be a bad thing if he woke up, they um, put him into induced okay. coma so that he wouldn't wake up. Really emotional time, really, really, really tough. Yeah. <laughs> Is it yummy? Do you like this food? Hi, Erika. Erika, kia koe. Do you want to be on TV again? <laughs> you do. Do you want something on TV? Oh, you do. You're still a hungry boy. <laughs> well, we learned afterwards that they're having a afternoon tea. Uh, he was given a piece of apple. Uh, he was eating on his apple and. 
Uh, one of the teachers across the table noticed that he wasn't breathing, he was having trouble. So they tried to get the apple out, um, wasn't working, he was starting to go blue and go unconscious. They did CPR, uh, he vomited up and the kids at the table were getting a bit distraught. So they took him into another room and they continued CPR until the ambulance service came. I thought it was just, okay, he's choked on something and it's gonna be okay. And then my wife, we spoke on the phone together and she let me know it's bad and it's pretty bad. Um, like life-threatening bad. I was quite confused, I think. Mixture of feeling kind of angry, I guess, um, frustrated, you know, how it's happened, why it's happened. He had some testing done and scans done. They knew there was brain damage and really essential parts of his brain. We met with the consultant and he said that kids in this situation don't do very well. That's kids who have a cardiac arrest in the community and that they usually die or they're severely brain damaged. So he hoped that he would prove him wrong. But currently we have a boy who can just, who can lie there and breathe. It's been a couple of weeks, I think, in the ICU. We got moved to the neurological ward. Spent a couple of weeks there, and then we came back to Rotorua and spent about a month, just over a month, in the hospital here. So we felt like we couldn't rest. If she was up, I was sleeping, and if I was up, I was letting her rest. And in that time, her sister took care of Aotea because there's quite difficult trying to manage her as well as looking after Nehana as well. I think for me it's been a journey of trust. Learning to trust in God when you don't understand to trust Him even though there's been no great miracle happen. Yeah. I had about six months where I just went into a feeling of nothingness. It was triggered by disappointment. Something, had, it was a specific occasion where I'd, the year before I'd had been really great things that had happened with Nehana and it came around again and I had great expectations but they weren't met. And so I felt disappointed with God. Another time I asked him again, I said, where were you when he choked and why didn't you stop it from happening? Hmm. And he said, I didn't cause it, it's what happens in life sometimes, bad things happen. I said, how can I trust you to look after my children because I need to be there to protect them? And he said, you can't control everything that happens. You need to know that I'm with them, they're mine forever. And that was the thing like, that I had to come to understand, you know, that whatever happened, whether he died, you know, whatever happens in this life, like that we're in his hands. <gasps> Our pastors came up to visit us. It was one thing they said early on in the piece that has remained a constant encouragement for me. And that was, you can either do this with God or without God. I certainly believe God's help has helped us get through this a whole lot better than what we could have ever tried to do on ourselves. Uh, we're still praying and hoping and believing that for a miracle. One thing we have experienced through it all, we've had so much help, very well supported. It's a sign of that God is with us, that He hasn't just left us alone. It's certainly been an encouragement to our faith, for sure. Oh Lord, you've been good to me and made a way I could not see. Your love came in and lifted me and now I won't.